In this video, I'm going to talk about the nine things I wish I would have known when I started my first academic position. I was over the moon when I got my lecturership position. So I didn't think that much through about that I could actually negotiate about things. So what I didn't do is I didn't think about the requirements I had for my lab space, the equipment that I needed, or the startup budget, or even thinking of PhD students. And afterwards I realized that most of my colleagues actually didn't negotiate on this. And they had very specific terms that they wanted. And you don't have to be afraid that they withdraw the job offer. It's really going back and forth about what you want. And what's really important is that you actually have this in writing. And I would definitely recommend to ask a little bit more than you would actually expect to get. Because in reality, when you get there, you often don't get all the lab space that you want or you don't have all the equipment that you need. So it's best to ask for a little bit more. So definitely negotiate there. The second thing is, is people always talk about that the combination of teaching and research is really difficult. Now, what we often forget about that is that administration often takes more time than any of those. So this can be something as simple as inserting the marks of your student. It can be moderation, but also just general bureaucracy. For instance, ordering IT kit can take up to months. So what really helps there is to have someone from the support staff that can help you out with this. Or sometimes you also have a designated buddy that can guide you through these processes. Now, the third thing is about grant income. I think we all know as starting early career academics, particularly in the first year, you feel a lot of pressure in order to bring in as much money as possible. So I know for the first one and a half years, I didn't get any income whatsoever. And the first grant I actually got was not more than a thousand pounds, but it was a big win at the time for myself. Now, what you need to understand, and it really helps if someone tells you that, that you need time to develop your teaching material, you need time to adapt to the university, and you need to work on these grants for a longer period of time. So, particularly in the first year, there shouldn't be that pressure on you in order to bring in that amount of money. So the fourth one kind of builds on these early career research grants, because as you know, there's often only one shot or only a limited number of opportunities to get them. So if you then give yourself that bit of space to work on the grant, you actually put together a much more competitive proposal. And what you really need to do is to ask for the people that you know from your network, even external to the university, to ask them for advice. So it's very important that they have a look at it as well and that you get proper peer review because you're not often going to get feedback on your actual grant. So it's better if you get that from people outside of the university to see how you can strengthen your case. And the fifth point really comes back to building up your network. Because besides building up your teaching material, building up a network of collaborators or people who support you might just be equally as important in the first year. Because what you might not realize at the time is that for every single early career research grant, you need a letter of support from someone or you need a recommendation. And this often can't be your PhD supervisors or someone you published with. So it's very important to go to these conferences and to make these contacts and to find people that can actually support you in the process. The sixth point is to get a mentor. Usually the university will have some kind of scheme in place that will match you up with someone. And you have to think about what it is that you actually want. It's probably not beneficial to have someone working very closely related in your field. So it is probably better to have someone from outside your field, or at least that's what I've experienced. And it's perfectly fine if you look at a couple of different mentors, because as you will see, each mentor will have a different style and from each one you will pick up different points. So you really have to find the best fit for you. And the first person you're paired up with might not necessarily be the best mentor for you. The seventh point comes back to industry connections. So we all know that research council grants are extremely competitive and very difficult to get. Now, in order to strengthen your application, you would often need letters of support from industry. But in order for yourself to get noticed by businesses or by other people in the field, it's really important that you have these social media links. So first of all, definitely get your own website. Don't just rely on the university website. You need to have your own website as well. Make the most out of LinkedIn and also out of Twitter, because many contacts that I have both in academia and industry actually found me via this route. So what I found is that it takes a long time to build up these relationships. So you often start off with a small project and you might not directly see the benefit of it, but it does pay off in the longer run. So 
So the first teaching evaluations can be quite difficult. But what you also have to understand that is normal, people tend to complain about the things that don't go well, whereas they might not often compliment you on the things that do go well. So you shouldn't take this personal. And what really helped me is that I did both observation with senior colleagues, but they also observed me as part of the process. So the key thing is to know that as long as you're approachable to the students and as long as they can see that you put the effort in, you will see that this aspect will also improve over time. The ninth and the final part is how do you go about supervision? Because it can be that you're catapulted from just starting your lectureship to supervision of a postdoc. And they were exactly in the same place as you were a year ago. Being a brilliant researcher doesn't necessarily make you a brilliant mentor or a good team player. The supervision style also changes over time. So you will see someone will need relatively a lot of help at the beginning of their PhD. And then you kind of need to let them go a bit and make sure that they can do it by themselves. Whereas in the end, you probably supervise a bit more in order to make sure that they actually get their thesis done. So what I find important is to have some kind of team building activities, but also to give the PDRAs some space to develop some of their own activities. Thanks for looking at this video and hopefully this will help you when you start your first academic position. If you want to meet some of the other researchers in my team or in this university, then please have a look at the other recommended videos.